Okay, so we're gonna do physics lab. We're gonna do the whole thing right here, right now. Go. Okay, this is, uh, and it's a, it's because students have a lot of problems with this, um, and so I'm just gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna be on the video, and you can go back and rewatch this. So here I have a spring, and I want to find the stiffness of the spring two ways, and in both those cases, I'm gonna make a graph. Okay, so. First thing I'm gonna do is just collect some data. The first data, I'm just gonna stretch the spring and measure the, the mass and the, and the stretch. Okay, so I, I should say, if I, if I put a mass on here and it has the mass M, then the spring pulls up with some force F the spring, gravity pulls down MG, and if it's at rest, then those two are equal. So F spring, the magnitude, is gonna be equal to MG. So whatever the weight of this is, that's the spring force. And then I do also know the spring force model, the magnitude of that is gonna be K times the stretch. Okay, so that's important. So if I know uh, that the stretch and the force are proportional. So let's start, let's just get to it and start taking some data. I have my little data table here. I have a little mass. I'm gonna hang it here and I'm gonna measure the position. And you're like, oh, I need the stretch. No, you need the position. So I'm gonna measure from the the top right here, and I'm just gonna get a, a rough estimate. It's moving a little bit, but I'm gonna say 50.5. I'm gonna try to do this fast. 50.5, and this is in centimeters. Okay, so uh, there's your data. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Um, so we're gonna make a graph to find the spring constant. I'm gonna do that in a second, but let's collect some more data. Uh, so the other thing is the, if I take this and I oscillate it, it turns out the period of oscillation, the time it takes to go from here back to there, one complete oscillation is T equals two pi square root of M over K. That's the period of oscillation. Okay. So I want to collect data so I can begin, I want to collect period and mass data so I can again make a graph to find K. And this is the part that everyone has trouble with, so I'm going to show you that. So, but I need that data. And now in order to get this data, I'm actually gonna measure 10 oscillations and then divide by 10. Okay, so I already have here uh, 270. And I'm not gonna do all these numbers because I'm too, I'm too lazy. So this is, uh, here we go. Let's get started. I want only oscillating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven point five three. Okay, so uh, I could do this a lot better, right? I could actually do a video analysis of this or use some other better methods for this, but you know, this is just really quick and simple. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two graphs. The first graph, I'm gonna find the spring constant from this data, and the second graph, I'm gonna find the data from this. So you, you might wanna write down that data and do it yourself, but I'm gonna do it for you, and we'll switch to the computer. So I've put my data from the board into the spreadsheet. I like to put things in a spreadsheet first before I plot them because that way I, can, I find it easier to change the numbers uh, in ways that I need to. So let's do that. So the first thing I want to do is get the mass in terms of kilograms. So I'm going to say M in terms of kilograms and that's just going to be equal and I can say equals this divided by a thousand right there. And I can copy that down. Next I'm going to get Y in terms of meters. Again I can just say that's equal to this divided by a hundred. Copy that down. And then finally, I need the period in seconds. And I recorded the period for 10 oscillations. So that's going to be equal to this. Actually, let's just not even do that one. That's going to be equal to this divided by 10. And then copy that down. OK. So now let's go ahead and make a graph for this first thing. So I'm going to copy this data right here, mass and position. Okay, and let me look over here. Where did I put it? Right here. 
So this is the, the formula I'm dealing with. So if I plot, if this is like, uh, let me just add the equation in here. Let's just say, remember this, just to be clear, okay, I'm editing this for you. Let's say y equals mx plus b. This is my equation for a line. So if I plot the force on the vertical axis and the, I'm gonna actually plot position on the, not the stretch, on the x-axis, then the slope should be k. So let's do that. I'm gonna use, uh, this is Logger Pro. Uh, we use it to collect data, um, but you know, you can use this for graphing too. So I'm just gonna paste my data in there. I'm gonna go ahead and edit these columns because I want to make them look nice. So this is the mass. And then and the units are kilograms. This is gonna make things look nicer. And this is Y, I'll leave it as Y. Just double click on that. And it's units of meters, okay. Okay, so now I wanna plot, um, the first one I wanted to plot, oh well, crap, sorry. Okay, go back over here. I actually don't need the mass, I need the force. So let's say F equals, it's gonna be this mass, times 9.8, I should have done that before, no wonder it wasn't looking right. Okay, and that's in Newton. So I'm gonna copy that down, and then I'm gonna put that in for the, instead of the mass. So I'm going back over here to Logger Pro, where do I even put it? There, so, and that's gonna be force. So I want to put the force right here versus the stretch. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to zoom in. There we got a line. Now I'm gonna fit a linear function to that and there you go, boom. Okay, so here I get the slope is uh, negative. It should be, because remember I'm measuring up, but it doesn't really matter. So I get 7.609 newtons per meter. So I get this, that's my spring constant right there. That's pretty nice. That's pretty linear fit. I didn't even do a great job, right? Okay, so let's just save this. Um, let's just save this somewhere. Uh, that's fine. Um, spring one. Okay, now let's make a new graph. And what are we gonna plot? So now I wanna deal with the period of oscillation. So if I come back over here, this, is my expression for the period, two pi squared to k over m. That's not a line, right? That does not look like this. I can't plot t versus um, something. I don't know what I even plot, okay? Um, actually, I got this backwards, okay. This is wrong. <laughs> okay, wait one second. So. I wrote it wrong on the board too. I'm having a wrong day today, that's for sure. Okay, let's just double check. It's M over K. I wasn't thinking when I wrote that, it's early. Okay, so that changes this one, M over K. And that changes this one. Okay, that makes more sense because as I increase the mass, it takes longer to oscillate, okay? If I had a stiffer spring, it'd take less time to oscillate. So here's my, uh, T is not proportional to the mass. They're not linear, right? It doesn't, it's not T and something times M because it's the square root of M. So if I get rid of the square root, that might work. So if I square both sides, I get T squared, four pi squared M over K, and I can write that as T squared times four pi squared over K, all that stuff's constant times M. So I wanna plot T squared versus M, and that should be a straight line, and that should be my slope right there, not K. Okay, so let's do that. So I need to calculate T squared. I'm gonna go back over here to my spreadsheet and say T squared. And that's just gonna be equal to this time. Actually, again, skipping that one. It's gonna be equal to this time squared. And then copy that down. Okay, so I'm gonna copy all of that. Let's see, let's copy the masses again. I'll just skip these. Uh, actually, I want the mass in kilograms. I'm gonna skip that first one because I didn't do it. 
and go to my logger pro this is the mass m m kilograms and then I'm going to copy my t squared and and the reason that we do this with the reason we want it as a line is so that I could do it on graph paper too and this is going to be t squared t squared second squared okay um, and then the, so it's t squared versus m that's where I want it let's zoom in uh, it's a fairly linear ish it's not as great uh, oh I didn't let's see this time I, all of this data and make a graph get rid of this one okay so from right there I get a, a slope of 4.54 okay so that's not the spring constant so let's go over here and I'm gonna write that down uh, so let's say slope 4.54 that's right okay and now if I go back over to my calculations that slope is 4 pi squared over k so k would be 4 pi squared over the slope 4 pi squared over the slope so let's go back to my calculation and say k equals 4 times pi squared divided by this number and I get 8.9 which is different than what I had before but it's in the same ballpark and, and I didn't take a very good experimental measurement of that I, I was really kind of rough especially with the timing you can do a lot better job but there you go I found the spring constant two different ways and I made two different graphs and they were both linear and that made me happy the end.